another home game edition. I'm Cindy Saddleman, and this one I want to show off uh, a home game that a lot of people probably didn't think even got a home game. Like, it didn't run for too long, it only lasted about a year, but it goes to show you that in the 70s, if you had a decent enough game show, chances are it probably got a home game. Joker's Wild had like ran for years and got like four versions of it three normal ones and joker's Wild and joker 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 got a home version that's probably the best version of the bunch and price is right as you can see right here got a quite a few home versions in the 70s and some uh dvd versions by the way that's called a teaser folks uh one month it's gonna be price is right we're going to break open this one right here, the second edition from 1974, which has Mystery Price in it, a short-lived game. And I got the second edition DVD game, and we're going to break that open uh, a couple of months down the road. But the one I want to talk about right now is kind of a buried gem for a lot of game show fans, especially the 80s version with Chuck Henry. And that is, of course, the Now You See It home game. This is really, really hard to come around. And one of the things that I kind of enjoy about this version already is this has everything about it. It's got the, I think it's got the, it's main 75, so it's got the second format. So it's the solo game, it's the, it has the three player format. So the first two players play the qualifying game, then the head to head, and then the solo game to break the bank for 5,000, 6,000, or whatever it was up to that day. And I will be perfectly honest, I am not a fan of the original format of Now You See It, but the 1975 format that they have used for this board game I actually find to be quite enjoyable because I hate team formats where you're forced to team up with someone that you don't know and can ruin a team while well, you can do really well and the other teammate is uh, dumber than a box of hammers and I've seen that happen on now you see it but anyway we're gonna break this thing open I'm excited, I hope you're excited, and we'll talk more about Now You See It. Well, here it is, we're gonna open up the Now You See It board game. Uh, a little production note, this is actually the second time we shot this, mainly you know, because I kinda didn't like the way the first one turned out. Um, we kinda made quite a few mistakes, and I don't think it's right that we do that. So let's break this thing open, and Right away, you see the giant question and answer manual for this. Mm -hmm. And there are 50 full games of Now You See It. There's the, uh, this is based off of the second format of Now You See It. So it was the semifinal game, then the playoff game, and then the solo game. So the turning of the chairs doesn't exist. And I'm thankful for that. And then... We have the actual board itself, and we'll save that for last. But what you need to do is open up that bottom half and take out all of these uh, boards, which will kind of hinder your way into playing the game. So I'll grab uh, one of them at random. Um, we're going to do game 33. Oh, another thing we gotta take off is the money, which is still bundled quite nicely. And then I'll go ahead and put it in for you. And as my brother will demonstrate, uh, game 33. Um, letter game, right? Yeah, letter game is gonna be first. Or the semi final game. The one where Jack Nars would go letter. Letter. Ad nauseum. As I set up this part of the home game. Because I find it pretty cool that now you see it had a 
for a Milton Bradley board game, it seemed very complex, but very cool at the same time. Like, there is a lot of detail, not only to this and the board, and there was quite a few moving parts for it just being, you know, cardboard and the like. As my... Is it all set up, Garrett? There is still a... Um, there actually is a board in this already. Oh, there's a board here. Let me... Here. If there's a board in it already, then we'll just use that. Yeah, I just have to adjust it. Here, can you bring it over here? So we could adjust it on camera? Right now I'm trying to... There we go. All right, here you go. And we'll plug it in. Now, one of the mistakes that we made in the original one is that the bottom part, we still carried all the boards. You have to take those out in order for this board to work well. So it's snug and it kind of touches the bottom and it's ready to go. Now, for the first half, which is the letters game, it would go like this, letter 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 and what game number was this um, 33 no the 33 was the one you were going to get this was 15 I think <coughs> sorry about that yep this is game 15 and so for the qualifying letter game uh, for line one, be a real high flyer. Letter. Letter. And it's kind of hard to pull since I have to look at it this way. And then when you think you know, one of your one of your friends would raise their hand, or if you have clickers from Jeopardy, from an old Jeopardy home game, you'd use that, and they would guess goose, and goose would reveal. And with the next question, something very big in Washington. Now, both me and my brother Garrett, just by the letters S-E, would know that something very big in Washington is, of course, the city of... Seattle. Yep. And the third question, easily spotted, would be letter, letter... Or leopard and that's how it would work that's how the first part would work and like the a game itself five points wins uh, and there's a usually around 11 to 12 questions or 12 to 13 I should say uh, per letter game so even if they do miss you know you have some leeway and then we get to the actual one with the big board, if you would please. Dun, 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 dun. Now you see it. And now you don't. Um, this kind of brings up a small problem I have with this board game. Because when you reveal the board, there's no way for it to stay... For it to stay up. And... I would kind of like that for this, instead of me being, if you're the host, you have to hold it like this and then read the read the questions like this, like for part two. According to the Shakespeare title, where are the two gentlemen from? And then you'd have, wait a minute. Oh, there it is. Line four, position eight, Verona, as you see right there. That's right. And that would be 12 points. And for the original, now you see it, that's a, a pretty big... It's a pretty big score for 12 points. Especially in the second half, when somebody goes over 50 points, you double it. And it goes on like that. Now, if you get to the third board, what you have to do is take this board and flip it over. Kind of like what you would do with Wheel of Fortune. And this kind of came out at the same time as 
I think it's the original Milton Bradley Wheel of Fortune, and they did it differently than uh, the Pressman people did. And and one thing that I kind of don't like about this is the when you need to flip it over, it, it easily tends to get stuck. The paper on something. Yeah, the papers get the paper gets caught on the inside edges of the cardboard. So, and when you remove it, it pushes it. Up. It causes it to fall all the way down. So that's why the that's why we had the problems with that earlier. Yep, and it's also why I like the Wheel of Fortune uh, cards more than the Night Seal ones because they're a little bit thicker and they're easier to maintain. And as you see, it kind of is there. There we go. And that's how you'd set up the round three board. It's a little hinky to say the least. Like, I kind of don't like how thin. I like the glossiness of the paper, per se, but I do wish these were thicker. That would have greatly improved the home game. Now, what I really don't like, and this is probably the only knock about it is, is the, um... Solo game. The solo game. Here it is, right here. Because with the solo game, you're giving these little pieces of paper. And... This will only allow you to play it twice because what you have to do is take a pen and actually circle uh, the uh, answers. And another problem I have with the solo game is the goal is to get 10 in 60 seconds like the actual show. Unfortunately, with a lot of the uh, solo games that I've discovered, not all of them go to 10. Like, for the example, game 15, um, as you can see here by the question and answer sheet, um, if we could get a shot right here, if it's, it only goes to seven. Uh, I haven't seen, and now you see it, that only goes to around seven, uh, Maybe the kids' version in Australia, because that goes to six. But it's also unbalanced, because some solo games that I have seen... Like, uh, if we go to game 14, that one goes to eight. And how many points do you need in order to um, win? Uh, the TV show, you need ten. That would mean that this game... That would mean that the... Thing is a, that um, it's not a complete translation of the show but for what they've done with Milton Bradley which were just cranking out home games uh, in the 70s like you had stuff like they came out with eight incarnations of Family Feud quite a few incarnations of Match Game uh, three incarnations of The Price is White right I have the second one and two editions of High Rollers. A lot of Holly... Wait, Hollywood Squares was Urban. But with a lot of Milton Bradley stuff, they just cranked them out. And to be honest, I... This is a better effort than I've seen because trying to do something that technological for a home variant is hard. And I appreciate the effort with this. I just wish the cards were a little bit thicker and, like, solo games were done better. Like, they had access to the show. They could easily copied 50 solo games from the show and nobody would have been the wiser. And on top of that, the way that the car... On top of that, the way that the cards were designed so that, so that um, you can't reuse them. 
because a lot of people would just circle they have to circle on the cards which is a problem because then they'd have to get because then those cards can't be used anymore so that's true and that we have an example of that underneath Uh, solo game one and I don't think this person got all of them right they they this person only had five only got five um, this one was tough like a crowded beach in the 40s Yeah, they didn't get that. That was line two. That was uh, Anzio. And I'm thinking, who would have gotten that during the show? But anyway. By the way, was um, if I'm to hazard any type of guess, the person who played this, um, seemed like the answers they had on here, they just wrote down what they saw as opposed to the actual questions. Because I don't... Because is there an answer for Kenya? Uh, yeah, uh, number nine, African Republic. Uh, number, um, and Iowa? Uh, a Midwestern state, which was question two. Zorro? No. Zorro was not an answer. There's mango, and then there's... Mango was number six, sweet fruit. And Grammys? Grammys? Meta Circle Gram which was metric unit of weight. But that is, now you see it, and it's a good whole game. They put a lot of detail in it. It's just some of the things kind of, oh, shit. Yeah, the part of, oh, shit. Part of the cardboard ripped. Yeah, oh, well. It's still usable. And it's an easy fix. Just some tape and you're good to go. The pro Yeah. Um, but then again, this is 45 years old, so... Expect wear and tear. Yeah. Does there it is right there. That's the problem. Uh, anyway, that's going to do it for this edition of the home game. I hope you enjoyed this look at... Now you see it. Good home game, especially having to deal with something that technological. And if you'd like uh, seeing this, uh, now you see it, just leave a comment, like, comment, subscribe. And if you want to see us afford to do more home games, become a Patreon back or patreon.com slash game show gumbo. I'm CD7, and we'll see you next time. Until then, bye bye.